Hey, I'm Doug. Welcome to Backcountry Pilgrim, a channel devoted to backpacking, hiking, and the Camino de Santiago. For this video, I'd like to go over some of the sleep system options that you might look at for your Camino. The Camino is not a backpacking adventure in the same way that like a through hike of the Appalachian Trail is. The vast majority of pilgrims are going to be spending their nights in albergues or maybe hotels. But one way or another, pilgrims can typically expect a bed waiting for them at the end of the day. Now what many albergues will not provide are sheets and blankets for those beds. Now for reasons of basic sanitation and also the often occurring bed bug problem that pilgrims bring with them into these albergues, whether they're clean or not, albergues will often provide some sort of disposable covers for the mattress and the pillow. And what this means is if you're going to go on a Camino pilgrimage, you're going to want some basic sleep system items with you. And I just want to go over some of the options. This is a mummy bag. And when I originally bought it, this was a pretty high tech piece of gear. By today's standards, however, not so much. For one thing, this sleeping bag weighs 56 ounces. The other problem is that it doesn't stuff very well. This right here is an eight liter stuff sack. And as you can see, I don't even have half the bag in the sack and it is already completely full. Now there are plenty of options out there now for much smaller, much more compressible sleeping bags. If you are gonna choose a sleeping bag, here are just a quick couple of considerations. Number one, one of the big choices between the two is the fill. That is, what is the sleeping bag full of? What gives it its poofy loft that keeps you warm? The lightest and most compressible fill are down feathers. And the higher the number, you'll see 600 fill, 800 fill. The higher the number, the more loft you get. You're gonna pay for it, but that's gonna be the lightest and most compressible. Now, one significant problem with down, especially for the Camino, is that if your down sleeping bag or jacket gets wet, it becomes practically useless. It just turns into a big mop. And it takes a long time to dry out, and it's not safe to just toss it in an industrial dryer and start spinning it around. So what this means is you've got to be very careful about keeping it in its own waterproof sack, not letting it get rained on, not letting it soak up moisture from your sweat or humidity, and, God forbid, should you end up with a bed bug problem, it's probably gonna take you a full day's work to get that down jacket or down sleeping bag taken care of. It requires special detergent, it requires special handling, and if you just go into a public laundromat, many of them automatically dispense detergent, which means you're not gonna be able to use the public laundromat to take care of your bag. You may end up having to get a hotel room for the day just to utilize their bathtub and do all of the special things you need to do to clean down. So just keep that in mind. Even if you find an inexpensive down sleeping bag, you are running the risk of needing to deal with what happens to it if it gets wet or if it has to be cleaned on the Camino. Synthetic fill, which is the other option from down, is gonna be a little heavier, it's gonna be less compressible, but it functions a lot better when wet, and it can be washed in a fairly normal way if you need to. Another issue that I have with sleeping bags is their shape. The mummy bag is kind of the standard backpacker sleeping bag shape because it keeps close to your body so that you don't have as much air to heat up. It's very good for warmth, usually has a hood that you can put over and tighten down. So those are the kinds of bags you're usually gonna want for backpacking in extremely cold weather. You're probably not gonna need that on the Camino. Although many albergues do not run the heater all night, you're probably not going to dip down into freezing temperatures and need a mummy bag. Further, for a lot of people, they're just not comfortable. You are pretty much stuck inside that thing and it can actually kind of get claustrophobic. But if you get a rectangular sleeping bag, it's gonna be bigger, it's gonna be less compressible, and it's gonna be heavy. The last thing that makes a sleeping bag kind of a difficult option is that you pretty much either have the sleeping bag on or off and in some cases, it can be difficult to regulate your temperature. Now this is a more minor problem to be sure, but it is something you might wanna think about. Another option that a lot of pilgrims go with is just bringing a sleeping bag liner. The idea of a sleeping bag liner is that you put it inside your sleeping bag and it makes a layer of warmth and also separation between you and the sleeping bag. 
So it increases how warm your sleeping bag is, which is a good way to regulate temperature, but it also keeps the sleeping bag from getting dirty because now you have a sleeping bag liner that can get dirty, sweaty, whatever, and it keeps the sleeping bag fairly clean. Now what a lot of pilgrims do is they just bring the liner. You essentially are just putting a thin layer between you and the bed and you can uh, treat these with permethrin to keep the bed bugs you know, dying if they get on you. And also it's another layer of cleanliness. They are also very lightweight and they can compress very small. Now, unfortunately, these can be pretty expensive. Some sleeping bag liners cost more than some sleeping bags. However, you don't need to go there. You can go down to Walmart, pick up the Ozark Trail sleeping bag liner for nine bucks. It weighs just under 11 ounces. It's not super lightweight, but it compresses small enough, and if that's all you're bringing, not that big of a deal. However, a sleeping bag liner alone is not going to keep you very warm. Keep in mind that even the high temperature rated sleep sacks are meant to work in conjunction with a sleeping bag. It's an entire system that is supposed to work together. By itself, a sleeping bag liner is really just a very, very thin sheet sewn into the shape of a bag. So imagine yourself sleeping with nothing but the thinnest of sheets on top of you and you'll get some idea of what sleeping bag liners are like. For me, that is where the camp blanket comes in. This is my Big Blue Mountain Lazy Bear camp blanket. I have done an entire video on this blanket, so I'm not gonna go into a whole big thing right now, but suffice to say for now that this synthetic blanket runs about 50 bucks, which puts it in the ballpark of a lot of other throw blankets out there that people use for camping. It weighs about 24 ounces and it compresses pretty neatly into a small size. So by going modular, I can do just a liner if I'm in a fairly well temperature controlled room and I just want a little bit of separation between me and the bed. And if I get warm, I can throw the blanket on. The nice thing about bringing the blanket is that I'm not carrying a zipper and I'm also not carrying a bunch of weight on the underside that's gonna get compressed anyway and not really keep me warm. By doing the blanket, I can do one ply, I can do two ply, and I'll be in the sleep sack anyway and won't absolutely need to be 100% covered. So this takes care of the comfort, this takes care of the claustrophobia, and for what it is, it weighs less than a comparable sleeping bag because I'm not carrying a hood and a zipper. One other thing that I am taking The Ghost Shadow is basically Mountain Hardware's less expensive version of the Ghost Whisperer jacket, probably the most popular jacket for backpackers out there. Now, the Ghost Whisperer is a very, very lightweight down jacket. This is a synthetic. It weighs a bit more, comes in at 12 ounces, and is gonna run you somewhere around $200. The great thing about this jacket is that it is fantastic for just putting on and wearing when you are maybe sitting around the town at night. It's very thin, and yet it is very well insulated. And the nice thing about this for sleeping is that if I need a bit more warmth, I can curl up in it and I'm not having to carry twice as much stuff by carrying a mummy bag style sleeping bag. Going modular might be a better way to go than just carrying one thing and hoping that it works in all situations. Lastly, I wanna talk about another very important part of the sleep system and that is the earplugs. Snoring pilgrims have been the bane of albergues for years, and it is no secret that if you are in a room with more than one person, there's probably some snoring going on. Hopefully that will be enough to drown out the snorers, but if it isn't, you may wanna replace these with some earbuds and just run some music or some ocean sounds or something uh, through your headphones from your phone. Another interesting option is this Bluetooth beanie. This is a warm, typical beanie style hat that actually has speakers built into the sides that connect via Bluetooth to your Bluetooth device. So if it's a little cold and I have some tunes that I need in order for me to get to sleep, this is one device that can do both. This is the Zekrek beanie. It weighs about five and a half ounces, comes in at about 20 bucks. And by the way, links to all these things are down in the video's description below. All right, I hope this video has helped you picking out your sleep system for your Camino. If it has, would you mind giving the video a like? And please subscribe to the channel if you are into backpacking, hiking, or Camino stuff. That is what Backcountry Pilgrim is all about. Until next time, I am Doug Buen Camino. Mm -hmm.